Namaste from Yogi Zoo. In order to optimize the experience and help your kids find the right Zen, we suggest that you prepare the following. Print the fun stuff for today's chapter. Dim the lights and get a bottle of water. Take your socks off and find a suitable yoga mat. Get a cozy blanket for the adventure. If you need a little break in the yoga flow, you can always get into this pose. Watch your strength, flexibility, and balance grow bit by bit. Have fun, and namaste. Namaste, all you yogis out there in the big world. Now we are ready for adventure, and let's see if you can guess where we are going today. Maybe you already guessed it. Otherwise, you'll find out soon as we begin the next chapter of the quest for the sleepy stretch. So sit down comfortably on your yoga mats, because now it's time for jungle yoga with Yogi Zoo. If you are pregnant or have medical conditions, Always consult a physician before practicing yoga. Ensure that the kids know never to push beyond their limits. If they are feeling pain or discomfort while in a pose, they should stop immediately and let the adult know. Remember that you are allowed to take breaks whenever necessary. All right, cool yogis out there. Let's find our Zen in the monkey's jungle yoga. Get comfy on your yoga mat and get ready to start. Take a deep breath and raise your arms to the sky. Connect your palms and lead them to your heart. Enjoy some deep breaths through your nose and let the air out through your mouth. Place your hands on your knees. Lean to the side. Find support with one arm and raise the other arm to the sky. Let's do it again the other way. Get back to center and slowly move forward like this. Find the center. Now, place your hands behind your bottom. Look up and lift your bottom from the mat. Slowly find the center and place your hands on your knees. Now we're getting up on all fours. Do like me. Sway in your back and look to the sky. Pull your belly in, arch your back, and look into your belly button. One more time, cool yogis. Place your toes on the mat and push your bottom upwards, stretching both your arms and legs. Well, loosen up a little. Get all the way up on your tippy toes and exhale when going down. Two more tough yogis.
find your plank. Sway your body like me. And once again, push your bottom upwards. Find your plank pose. Now, try and see if you can master the tough side plank. Also to the other side. Find the center again. Lower your body to the mat. And push back up. Down. Up. Down. And all the way up, arms and legs stretched. Take tiny steps forward. And relax your body. Roll up very slowly. And raise your hands to the sky. Take a deep bow and breathe. Let's do that a couple of times. Now get back to your plank pose. Place legs and feet on the mat. Lift in your strong upper body and see if you can spot your feet this way and also the other way. Place your feet on the mat, arms and legs stretched. Raise one foot high into the sky. Swing your knee under your belly. Raise again. Under your belly. Raise again. Under your belly. One last time. Now, place your foot between your hands. Turn the other foot, like I do. Now, lift your strong body and raise your hands to the sky. Lean back, nice and easy. Place your hands behind your back and lace your fingers. Now lean forward, take a deep breath and raise your hands to the sky. Let's do it again. Up. And down. Let go of your fingers and place your hands on the mat, putting your leg on the outside. Get down on your forearms if you're able to. Now sway from side to side. Place your toes on the mat and get back to your plank pose. Take tiny steps forward. Slowly stretch your arms all the way.
raise your other foot high into the sky. Now swing your knee under your belly. Raise again. Under your belly. Raise again. Under your belly. And one last time. Now, place your foot between your hands. Turn the other foot like I do. Now, lift your strong body and raise your hands to the sky. Lean back nice and easy. Place your hands behind your back and lace your fingers. Lean forward, take a deep breath, and raise your hands to the sky. Let's do it again. Up. And down. Let go of your fingers and place your hands on the mat, putting your leg on the outside. Get down on your forearms if you're able to and sway from side to side. Place your toes on the mat. Get back to your plank pose. Roll to the side and see if you can find your balance while raising your hand to the sky. Find the center. And also the other side. One more time. We're almost there. Roll to the other side. Find the center. Take tiny steps forward. Slowly stretch your arms all the way. Take tiny steps forward. And relax your body. Roll up very slowly. And raise your hands to the sky. Take a deep bow and breathe. Find your plank pose. Lower your body to the mat. Push back up and down. Up and down. Now get back on your feet. Get comfy on your yoga mat. Take a deep breath and raise your arms to the sky. Connect your palms and lead them to your beautiful heart. Namaste. Get ready, yogis. It's time for today's special sleepy stretch. Monkey somersault. Namaste. Start in a squat position. Hold your hands out in front of you. 
Hold your palms facing the sky and tuck your chin to your chest. Make sure that your back is rounded as you fall back onto it. Push with your hands and shoulders as you roll backwards. Land on your feet and find your balance. In your own time, get back up. Namaste. Good job, yogis. Now team up with another yogi on the mat and get ready for today's special double stretch. Silent twin jumps. Namaste. Now let's get down so your hands and feet are on the mat. Come up on your tippy toes and bend your legs. Take three small jumps, getting ready for the big one. Be strong in your arms. Take a high jump and see if you silently can land right behind your hands. Now roll back up. Namaste. Nice teamwork, yogis. Now, take a sip of water and use your blankets if you wish. Get comfortable on your yoga mats and join the monkey's journey in the quest for the sleepy stretch. The Quest for the Sleepy Stretch Chapter 1 Boba hmm. I'm lying in the same spot as usual, aren't I? Chimp thought and slowly blinked the day into gear with his sleepy monkey eyes. It smells lovely here, like it does every morning. I hear my grandfather's deep snoring and the leaves whistle softly in the treetops. And now my eyes are open enough to look around. Yes, I am at home, but isn't something missing? Chimp's little monkey body seemed sore and stiff now that his mind was awake. He had been dreaming about her, the sweet monkey from the other side of the big river. She who made his monkey feet curl up every time they met. Did I become ill during the night? Chimp pondered. <sighs> Maybe I hurt myself from falling when I played tag with the wild boars yesterday. Nah, it didn't feel like that. Something completely different was off this morning. Then, out of the blue, it hit him. Oh, I'm missing my morning stretch. Darn, that's it. It starts all my days off and awakens my body. But now that he had remembered what was missing, why didn't he just stretch out like he usually did? Chimp's morning stretch was completely gone, like a missing banana in an empty peel when you're the worst kind of monkey hungry. Hmm. Grandpa? 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 Chimp yelled as loudly as he could, knowing that the chance of the old monkey waking up was as likely as his monkey toes not curling up when he met her, the one in his dream, who he didn't even know the name of. Chimp had created his own name for her. In secret, her name was now Sweet, because in the song he was writing about her, the name Sweet actually fit really well. Chimp could barely get up properly. He had a tough time lifting his feet, so instead he dragged them across the floor until he reached Grandpa's hammock. The little chimpanzee stirred up so much dust by dragging his feet, it flew up his nose, resulting in a chain of sneezes. Choo! 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 Ah, choo! Ah, ouch! Chimp exclaimed so loudly that it woke Grandpa up. He fell out of his hammock with a grunt into the dust cloud and began sneezing as well. Sneezes flew from wall to wall in the little monkey den where Chimp had always lived with Grandpa, or Boba, as he was called here in the jungle. Boba, Boba, I can't remember my sleepy stretch and... <coughs> Ouch! Every inch of my monkey body hurts. Help me, Boba. Help me. Chimp said, 
looking at Bobo with wet eyes. Grandpa Bobo was completely flustered and wiped his eyes free of dust. But my sweet boy, you've always performed your special sleepy stretch when you laid under your blanket. You've never really shown it to anyone, I think, Grandpa said while he scratched his beard and wiped away the 11 sneezes from under his nose. I have actually never seen it, little chimp, Boba said, snuffling while a mystified expression hmm. made its way across his aging face. But if there's anything I'm good at, it's thinking, right? <laughs> said Boba and did his morning somersault. He did this every morning. But without food, food and drink, the hero must rethink. Isn't that right, Boba? Chimp finished the sentence. The sleepy stretch was missing from his memory, but he hadn't forgotten how Boba's mornings always began. Two and a half bananas with coconut sprinkles and scoop de bap, yeah. And suddenly the day twinkles, mm, yeah. Howled Boba, now sitting in their little food chamber in the corner. What do you want for breakfast today, little buddy? Huh? <sighs> Just the same as you, Grandpa. Chimp sighed and carefully rubbed his sore back. After breakfast and a little fur grooming, Boba scratched his beard again. Do all old monkeys do that? Chimp considered, wishing he would never grow a beard because sometimes when Grandpa kissed him, bits of coconut sprinkles would fall like snow from his beard. <clears throat> Boba growled while he elegantly swung himself back into his hammock. I've been thinking while we ate, chimp, and I am completely certain now. I have never seen your sleepy stretch, and I can only give you advice on what I would do if I suddenly forgot my morning and evening somersaults. The oldest being here in the forest isn't me, chimp. So, if my somersaults disappeared, I would ask Madam Croc where to look. She is both intelligent and wise, and even though her eyes only barely poke out of the water, she sees more than all of us who live in the jungle. Chimp didn't understand this. How could Madame Croc know more about the world than Boba did? It didn't make any sense. Boba had never told him anything untrue, though. He was the wisest monkey Chimp knew, and he knew a lot of monkeys. So, he picked himself up, brushed his teeth, snuggled up to Boba, fully aware of the risk of coconut snow, and whispered, I'll find Madame Croc today, Boba, like you would do. But since it's a long journey and I probably can't make it back before tonight, could I borrow your special walking stick? Chimp looked up at his grandfather's kind smile and saw a coconut sprinkle dangled dangerously from his beard. Grandpa's stomach jumped like ocean waves during a thunderstorm when he laughed. <laughs> of course, my sweet boy. I've told you that you can always take the walking stick. It is mine, but it is also yours. Just like it was mine when it was my mother's, as it was my mother's when it was my grandfather's. That was another thing Chimp didn't fully understand yet. All that father's, mother's, grandfather's, grandmother's business was just as bewildering as trying to understand that Madame Croc could see everything. But something magical happened in Chimp when he held the old walking stick. He felt it. The walking stick made him feel safe and brave when he was sad or needed confidence. It had done the exact same for all the grandmothers, grandfathers, mothers, or whatever you called them before him. Off you go, kiddo. Just remember to be back home before the howling of the owls, growled Boba and kissed Chimp on the cheek. The coconut sprinkle from Boba's beard finally landed right in the middle of Chimp's right arm fur. As soon as Chimp grabbed the walking stick, he felt its magic bubble up inside him. He breathed deeply and sent Boba a swarm of the air kisses they had invented when he was teeny tiny, and he received just as many back from his grandfather's warm, wrinkled hand. Although his body ached, Chimp started whistling his melody about Sweet. It had only been a couple of days since he last saw her, and if he closed his eyes, he could see her sweet smile, 
It's a little weird that you can sometimes see better with your eyes closed, Chimp reflected. Nevertheless, this was how it was. He was exhausted following the long and hard journey, but his stubbornness and the walking stick had gotten him to his destination. So he politely greeted Madame Croc while peeling his last banana. Chimp, what on earth are you doing here? Madame Croc smiled while she packed her backpack. How can I help you, my friend? You look quite confused. Chimp told her about his bizarre morning at home with Boba and finished by saying, And Madame Croc, what if I never find my sleepy stretch again? What will I do if you can't help me? The crocodile wore the same facial expression as Grandpa when he ruminated over something important. Chimp sat on a rock and waited patiently. Finally, Madame Croc exclaimed, What your body has ridden, it has also hidden. Madame Croc then pulled something out of a secret inner pocket in her beautiful crocodile skin. Chimp could see her holding it tightly while looking at him with a mild yet stern look. Chimp, you must go on a journey, and neither you nor I know how long it will take. So, if your body forgot the answer, then your body must ask other bodies. Go out into the world, Chimp, and ask the ones you meet along your way how they stretch every morning and night. Stretch your body in their sleepy stretch with them. Then, I'm sure your body will one day remember your very own sleepy stretch. Bring this with you on your journey. She then handed him what she had hidden and continued. I can't guarantee bodies in this jungle can help your body remember. So, you may have to go elsewhere to meet beings you don't yet know exist. This magical talisman is very, very old, Chimp. Much older than the beautiful walking stick you brought with you. Press once on the red button in the middle of the talisman, and you'll meet creatures from the water, like me. Press twice, and you'll meet creatures who walk the earth, like you. Press thrice, and you'll meet creatures who fly in the air above us. With these words, Madame Croc threw a few last things in her bag and moved into the water with a splash. Oh, and by the way, Chimp, when you find yourself in difficult situations on your journey, remember to take deep, slow breaths all the way down into your stomach so your belly button sticks out like I do before I dive. I wish you a good trip. Chimp then saw the green spikes on Madame Croc's back disappear into the water. So, there he sat on a rock, with an empty banana peel in one hand, and a marzipan in the other hand. Or, what was the name again? Garbage can? Malice can? Chimp had already forgotten the name. But, he remembered how the stunning magical jewelry, with the red stone in the middle, worked. One click equals water. Two clicks equals earth. Three clicks equals air. Yes, now I will definitely find my sleepy stretch, he said to himself and got up from the little rock. But his feet were tired and his back ached, so he sat back down again and tried breathing like Madame Croc had suggested, all the way down to the stomach so he could see his belly button stick out. It actually felt really nice. His body hurt less when the air reached all the way down to his stomach. He ought to remember that. Suddenly, the little monkey came up with another good idea. Hmm, if my legs are this tired, it's a good thing I have a magical... Uh... Oh, saucepan? Chimp looked down at the magical jewelry and thought long and hard. I better start carefully, he thought. I can't swim, nor fly... So, why don't I pick Earth for today? Chimp grabbed the walking stick tightly again, closed his eyes, and pressed twice on Madame Croc's magical... Uh, Vista? Harsky? Mally? Oh, oh, talisman! 
Chimp remembered the name in the same moment as he disappeared from the little rock with a poof. Feel the peaceful buzzing flow in your bodies and minds. Remember to practice all of the sleepy stretches whenever you feel the need for them. And try to invent your very own special sleepy stretches, alone or with partners, 